Hello everyone, today I'm bringing you the sequel to the old driver's love story, The Life of Sprin. In the last episode, we talked about Aiden returning to the country and originally wanting to give up writing. However, with Jerome's encouragement, he picked up his pen again. He expressed his feelings by writing a book for Jerome. Two years passed unnoticed as time went by. Although the two often conveyed their feelings by letter, Jerome still makes time to visit Aiden. That's where the story begins. On this day, they meet at the couple's hotel and look forward to a great time. However, after a spring storm, Aiden stumbles upon the business card Jerome dropped. Turns out it's a sexy bar. He was after pursuing Jerome a bit. Aiden, due to a momentary misunderstanding and jealousy, says something against his will, causing the two to part ways. Driving back in the rain, Aiden recalls a question he once posed to his teacher. At that time he asked his teacher about those who have been satisfied with happiness. Are they so fulfilled? that they don't need to rely on literature and art to fill their loneliness, because they probably don't even know what it's like to be lonely. However, he could no longer recall the teacher's answer at the time. On this day, the family planned a trip to the beach, as Aiden watched his sister's joyful family. He thought about that question once again, their happiness alienated him. He wants no part of it, and he has nowhere to vent his loneliness. How is it that they come live so freely and laugh out loud in the sun? And you're stuck in a hotel with no daylight. Aiden is terrified at the obsession of loneliness and chooses to run away. His heart was asking why he couldn't have that kind of happiness. Why does he always wallow in loneliness? In the evening, Aiden, who has been out traveling all day, comes home and is counted out by his exasperated sister. They have a hard time with each other. They don't understand each other. And so the next morning, Aiden ran away from home, not knowing where he was going either. He held on to the mood of going with the flow, staring out the car window in a state of ecstasy. He sees the hotel where he once had an argument with Jerome and stays there. He lay back on the bed and would have liked to feel what was left of Jerome's scent. Instead, all he heard was a man and a woman arguing downstairs. Aiden goes to check it out, but is mistakenly injured by a woman named Camille. Jerome, who has a sprained left hand, will need two weeks to recover. Camille was very sorry to learn that Aiden was a writer. That's when Camille's son Ernesto arrived, confronted by the gentle Ernesto. Aiden asked the question once again. With that, Camille invites Aiden to his bistro and is warmly received. Camille is thrilled to learn that he's a writer of sensible fiction, and Ernesto asked why, when alone at the lover's inn. Aiden falsely claimed it was to avoid relatives who were vying for her inheritance. Warmly, Camille invites him to come and stay at her house, which is a bit small, but he won't be found. That's how Aiden came to live in Camille's house. Ernesto also thoughtfully brought in tables for writing roles. On this day, Aiden helped clean up the room. Ernesto sees it and tries to grab it and do it himself but runs into Aiden's hand. The tavern opens its doors at night, and Camille warmly entertains everyone. Ernesto chatted with Aiden. Jerome called Aiden at home after his call went unanswered, only to be told he was not at home, and Aiden did his old job with Ernesto. This scene is only crashed by Jerome, who came out to look for Aiden, and was not in a good mood. One speaks and the other writes how come they replicated in someone else when they thought it was a memory unique to them. He questioned who this man in front of him was and why he was looking for a ghostwriter again. Listening to the vague explanation, Jerome was so angry he wanted to run away. Camille had the good sense to close the store door to them, leaving them alone. Aiden thinks he has no future in life. He doesn't know why Jerome likes himself the way he is. Faced with Jerome, who grew up being loved by his parents, he is afraid that the two will make him suffer if they get together. Aiden, once wounded, no longer has the courage to do it again. This time the choice was a desperate one, which is why he hesitated and suffered. Jerome is powerless in the face of a delusional Aiden. At this point Ernesto calls for Camille from upstairs, and the crowd rushes her to medical attention. It turned out to be an intestinal obstruction, and she was temporarily hospitalized. Back at the tavern, Jerome proposes to Aiden. They're going out together tomorrow after they've seen Camille for a walk and a break. This, however, is compared to the devil by Aiden, who cannot empathize with his patients. And Jerome's vacation was well earned, only to be told by Aiden that he was being careful. He finally broke down and snapped, then took off in the rain. Luckily he meets the gentle Ernesto on the way. At night, Jerome sleeps alone on the couch in the bistro. His drenched clothes hang next to him. Aiden had come and tucked him in, had watched him tenderly and laughed gently. Jerome, on the other hand, just feels Aiden's heart moving away from him and breaks down in tears. The next morning, though the rain was still falling, but Jerome was gone, leaving only a note. Aiden visited Camille in the hospital. Camille urges Aiden to go after him when she learns that the rescue has left. Aiden, however, says Camille's condition is more important. Camille, who has long since seen it all, wants Aiden to stop using her condition as an excuse. Those perhaps possible outcomes remain only in the imagination after all. He's going to try to take that step, and even if he's turned away, it's better than nothing. 
Camille tells Aiden that no one is born strong. You only become strong as you grow. Indeed, the fear of failure will always lead to nothing but failure. And the only way to change it is to take that step. He looked out the window at the sunny day after the rain. Bright and beautiful. On the way back, Ernesto tells Aiden that Camille had a reason for saying that. Because he had cancer once. Although he was cured three years ago. But it made him start to cherish the people around him. The things around him. And live happily in the pressed. He doesn't want Aiden to regret it. And finally Aiden releases it. Ernesto dropped him off at the station. Aiden called Jerome and didn't get through. Determined. Aiden didn't look back and took the trolley to the bow. On the way, he asks Colt to meet him, and it's a little awkward for them after not seeing each other for so long. Still, Colt is surprised that Aiden called him out just to help contact Jerome. Mission accomplished Colt looks at Aiden with fascination and asks him a question. Their story has finally come to fruition. The fire inside Colt, even if he can't put it out, no longer belongs to Aiden. And a miss is a miss. A relieved Colt wishes Jerome and Aiden happiness. He said goodbye to what was once their past, and Aiden hoofs it to Jerome, who won't abandon him. At Jerome's house, Aiden sincerely apologizes. Those words melted Jerome's heart and they hugged happily. The understanding Jerome proposes to go to Aiden's old house. He actually wants the runaway child to come home. Station, his sister came to pick them up, having forgotten all the unhappiness of their quarrel. The curiosity of my nephews, the love of my mother, everything is so counsy. Sure enough out of the gloom, things around you change according to your mood. During the night, Aiden and Jerome were entwined. Early in the morning, the nephew opened the door to the room by mistake. When her sister saw the two sleeping together, she first ran away in reflex panic. She turned back again all relieved, with a smile that seemed to understand her brother's plight. That question she once asked her teacher. Aiden also finally remembered the answer. Happiness, like the moon, is always cloudy. No one's life is at all lonely. It's another cherry blossom season and Aiden has a new book out. Ernesto ran away with the boy he liked. Camille wins the lottery and goes to long for Africa. Ada finally regains her confidence and spreads her smile. He intends to go to Kyoto to live with Jerome. The story ends here, and the show brings the whole series to a close. It not only explains the end of each character, but it also ultimately explains loneliness. That is like the loneliness that exists more or less in everyone's heart as if it were a cloudy day. Each person coexisted with it in their own way, acting out the sorrows and joys that belonged only to them. That's life in flesh and blood. Aiden and Jerome are happy because they met each other. They made themselves and the relationship. Ernesto's love is impulsive, but it should also be enviable. Though the movie doesn't explain it, it gives room for the imaginable. I hope everyone has the courage to run to each other for love, against all odds, even once. That's the end of today's story, so be sure to support it if you like it. Leave your feelings in the comments section, and we won't see you in the next installment.